Hello, everyone, and welcome to Heads Up, the weekly webcast and podcast of the National Headache Foundation. I'm Dr. Lindsay Weitzel, migraine strategist, founder of the Facebook group Migraine Nation, and chronic daily migraine survivor. I am here today with Dr. Vincent Martin. Dr. Martin is the director of the Headache and Facial Pain Center at the University of Cincinnati, and he is also the president of the National Headache Foundation. Hello, Dr. Martin. How are you today? Hi, Lindsay. I'm doing just fine. So our topic today is COVID, the COVID vaccine, and having a headache or migraine disorder. This is part two of this topic. We talked about it before, but we're going to go a little bit more in depth about um, what we were talking about when it comes to perhaps it could kick up our migraine or headache disorder a little bit and what to do if that happens. So Dr. Martin, let's just start with have you seen um, headache or migraine flares in the patients that you've seen after they get the COVID vaccine? Well, I can speak from both experience with my patients as well as my own personal experience. I'll probably start with the latter. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you that when I got the COVID vaccine with the first dose and I got the Moderna vaccine that I had migraines for about four or five days after the first dose, but they were, they were self-limited. I also had um, an uptick in my auras, my visual auras, the little little flashing lights and zigzaggy lines that I get. Like for example, in the 10 years prior to when I got the vaccine, I probably had three visual auras. So I don't didn't have very frequent migraines or auras. But within the month after the vaccine, I got three visual auras. So that was a distinct change. And then so I got three or four headache days, and maybe four, maybe five headache days after the first vaccine. And then after the second one, I got maybe a couple of days, which is kind of exact opposite of what one would have thought. I would have thought it would have gotten worse with the uh, second one, but with me, it was mostly with, with the first shot. Now with my patients, um, I have seen worsenings of, of migraine um, and also have had a few people that had new onset auras. So they never had a visual aura before. And for the very first time after a COVID vaccine, they got, they got an aura mm -hmm. and, and many of them have had self-limited increases in headaches for you know anywhere from one or two days up to five days i've had one person had longer lasting headaches after the vaccine but that's not that's more the exception than the rule so my experience thus far is that the, the headaches do many times can kick up but usually for relatively short duration okay so there's a question that's been circulating around that I think it's important that we address. Do you think that we should alter any of our medication schedules, uh, especially if we're taking monoclonal antibodies or for someone who gets Botox? Is there a reason to be concerned about taking these things or getting them near the time of the vaccine? Well, I will tell you first that there's not a lot of data on that, but mm -hmm. when you kind of look at what we think these drugs do to the immune system, there's at least, at least no evidence to suggest that either Botox or the new monoclonal antibodies, which are either monthly shots or there's some that can be given every three months, actually affect the immune system. So there's no theoretic reason to withhold these therapies. And the other thing I would say is that if we did withhold them, I would be more concerned that you would even be more vulnerable <laughs> to, right. to get headaches with the vaccine uh, right. when, it, when they flare. Um, so uh, I don't alter any of the shots. I don't alter Botox. Um, I don't alter monoclonals. I don't, offer, I don't alter any of the oral preventative medications uh, whatsoever, either before or after the shot. Okay. Uh, the vaccine. Okay. Um, so let's start by talking about either the day you get the vaccine or right before. Are there any medications we either should be avoiding or anything we should be taking or paying particular attention to if we're someone who's worried about having our headaches or migraines, migraines excuse me, flare up uh, due to the vaccine? Well, I think you have to differentiate what you take before and then what you take after the vaccine. Okay. There is some um, experimental data, particularly with other vaccines like the influenza vaccine and others, that sometimes that anti-inflammatories, things like ibuprofen, naproxen, mm -hmm. and uh, indomethacin, tordol, that they, that can blunt the immune response. So the, there's something called antibodies that are induced by the vaccine that try to attack the virus if it if it comes on and that those might be blunted. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. by anti-inflammatories. We don't know for sure whether that's true with the COVID vaccine, but with that limited data, if you can avoid anti-inflammatories for at least a few days and maybe even up to a week before the vaccine, that might, might theoretically provide a more robust immune response, which is really what you want with the vaccine. Now, if you contrast that to after the vaccine, um, there is you know, the same concern, but I think many of, of physicians, including um, uh, infectious disease doctors, would still allow anti-inflammatories, particularly um, you know, anti-inflammatories or even acetaminophen to treat the symptoms that you get with the vaccine, because you can get you can get chills, you can get shakes, sometimes you can get a fever, right. um, as well as, as, as some of the headache symptoms as well. And you've got to treat with something. So personally, of the, of the two, Tylenol versus, versus anti-inflammatories, I probably would go with the, the Tylenol to treat many of these symptoms afterwards, if, if possible. Okay. And then in terms of like treating headaches, if you were to get headaches after the vaccine, you can use all the same medications you typically do. I mean, if you want to avoid anti-inflammatories just because you're, you want to make sure that your immune response is as robust as possible, you can still use things like the triptans, things like right. sumatriptan or imatrax or maxalt, or, you know, which is um, rizotriptan or zomeg or, or relpax, any of the triptans. You can still use the new meds called the G-pants. Right. You can still use something called the ditan. So all the the migraine specific meds wouldn't really be a problem. Okay. The only thing I would avoid if you had a really bad headache, sometimes we use steroids okay. to treat um, or break a headache cycle. I yeah, probably yeah. wouldn't use steroids uh, ranging anywhere from a, a few days to a week or you know, like sometimes I'll even give them for up to 12 days to break headache cycles. I probably would not use them for fear that those really blunt the immune response. So I just don't know what would happen with the vaccine Right. Uh, if you, you know, if you use steroids. Right. So my next question was going to be that if we do find ourselves in a, in a fairly severe pain or migraine flare after the vaccine, what should we avoid? Because I do know that in the last podcast, you said to avoid steroids. Um, so that is important that if steroids are part of your escape, escape plan or your plan to, to break a pain cycle, you might want to talk to your physician about that uh, after the vaccine. Is there anything else that you feel people should be avoiding? I wouldn't say avoiding, but I think you might want to, another way you might want to phrase it is how do you manage the headache? So if, mm -hmm. if you if you take your standard therapy and that doesn't work, let's say you're on Imitrex, which is sumatriptan. Right. Um, let's say that doesn't work, then there might be some other therapies that you might add on. And there's another group of therapies that have a very low side effect profile called the G-Pants. Yeah, and the trade, name, tra trade names for them are Nurtec and Ubrelvi, mm -hmm. and uh, those could be layered onto the Imitrex uh, to give you another medication that you might help that might help manage the headaches. Or you could do the same thing with uh, with the with the with the Ditan. There's one called Rayval. Right. That's the trade name for that, and that mm -hmm. could be layered onto your your other therapies that might work. So you may need to go to some novel and newer therapies in addition to your time honored therapies that might help manage them. And then in worst case scenarios, you might need to go to more extreme measures. And those could include things like infusion. So if you ran into a situation where you had like a migraine that, that wouldn't go away after you know, four or five days and you're just really in bad shape, right. you may need to get an infusion, which can either be done in an emergency room where you get intravenous medications to try to break the headache cycle. Mm -hmm. Or in our case, we have an infusion unit at the University of Cincinnati. So if we, if we were able to, to, to do this during the week, because we don't do it on the weekends, right. patients could get anywhere from one to three days of intravenous therapy to try to break a headache cycle. And then another uh, strategy that some headache doctors will use is they'll, they'll do a little nerve blocks where they block the occipital nerve in the back of the head. And sometimes that can be a very effective measure to, to, to basically get rid of recalcitrant and severe headaches that occur either with the COVID vaccine or even, or even without. Great. So if you find yourself in trouble and your regular um, regimen isn't working, go ask for one of these new therapies, perhaps nerve blocks, perhaps in infusions. Is there anything else that you think we should add to this topic, Dr. Martin? The only thing I would say is that, uh, that of course, there's always exceptions to every rule. Mm -hmm. um, there was a patient that went 
really had a really long and protracted bout and she'd already had one dose of the vaccine like almost a month ago. Mm -hmm. um, and then she got her, then she got a second dose and then she got really bad. And then we had to make it, we kind of weigh, had to weigh the risk benefits. And in that one patient, we did use steroids to try to, to break okay. the thing. So, you know, you have to discuss these things with your healthcare provider and decide what, you know, what's the right move for you? Because I can't make that decision just and make generalities in a, in a podcast to find out what the right solution might be for a given patient. Right. Very good point. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And thank you everyone for being here for this week's edition of Heads Up. Please join us next week for the podcast of the National Headache Foundation. Thank you so much.